So some of the areas of ch challenges with getting older are housing, transportation, staying actively engaged in the community, and um, also sometimes people get to a point where they need personal assistance. Mm -hmm. So um, those are kind of, are, is there anything I missed there? Well, I think that there's only one way but through, right? Every single one of us is aging. Every single one of us is going to be touched in some way as a caregiver or being cared for. So y'all being here right now, kudos, you're planning ahead. Most of my work as a certified care manager is crisis. Folks call in a crisis. But what you're doing right now, you're getting proactive. So we're going to go through some things that you're going to already know and, like we said, share with everybody you can. This is information to share with your friends, neighbors, family. Okay? Excellent start. Oh, wrong way. Sorry about that. Okay. So falls are amongst the top 10 uh, causes of death in older adults. So what can you speak to, mm -hmm. Carla, uh, to prevent falls? Mm -hmm. um, because to me, it's kind of this slippery slope where I've mm -hmm. seen, and I'm sure you all have too, you know, you hear about somebody who breaks their hip and then mm -hmm. suddenly you hear th mm -hmm. about their funeral plans. Right. So a couple of things. One, you can do everything possible and still have a fall. It can happen. So some of the things, though, to try to help and prevent would be staying physically active as you can at the senior center, which is free. All the classes are free. Doing the balance classes, the exercise classes. Also taking advantage of physical therapy and occupational therapy. Under your Medicare, if you go into the hospital and you're admitted for three nights, they'll often talk about going into physical rehab. And that's covered under insurance for the first 20 days. That doesn't mean you're gonna be there 20 days, but that's what insurance will cover. And then after that, the supplement plan, there's a percentage. We can talk about that more. But that's utilizing what the um, services are out there that are covered to help with your physical stability. When you come home after a surgery or a procedure, then you can also get home care where they'll have an occupational therapist, a physical therapist, and oftentimes folks don't take full advantage of a speech therapist. A speech therapist is not about necessarily speaking as it is cognitive function, swallowing, many different things that can help. So I always tell folks, if you're getting home health, which is covered under insurance, and they say PTOT, physical therapy, occupational therapy, if there's any potential cognitive changes, ask for speech therapy, because that's another benefit that is covered by insurance, okay? Um, when folks, you hear the story about folks falling, break a hip, and then all of a sudden they're planning the funeral, well, oftentimes what happens is the person is more um, reclined in that reclined position and more likely to get other, uh, you can sit up here, ma'am, there's a seat right here. You can get more infection, and oftentimes there might be an aspiration where a little bit of food or water gets into the lungs, which then becomes pneumonia. And those are the real culprits of after post-surgery or a fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are my suggestions on fall. Okay, so, and really related to fall oh, yes. um, is housing. And some of the questions that I get are usually stairs and then a way to get upstairs if there's not a bathroom or a bedroom downstairs. Mm -hmm. Those are the questions I get. So the one thing I do want to mention here is, this is a question I get all the time about elevators and or stair lifts. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay in the home you're in now, Unless you have a home that's worth over a million dollars and you feel comfortable with that, the elevator is not a good choice for you because you'll never get that money back. So it's right. thirty to forty thousand to put an elevator in. A stair lift is going to be somewhere in the range of twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred. I just spoke with someone yesterday. She spent thirty six hundred with an Acorn brand. Yes. Acorn, Acorn is one of the most common brands, and that is something that uh, can be utilized. But hopefully, as you're looking in your home situation now, can it be that the main level could have some renovations, slight renovations? I've worked with families that have turned a dining room into mm -hmm. a bedroom, modified a powder room to also have a shower space. So there are things that can be done to be on that main level. 
which is very important. Lighting, I think, is one that's overlooked mm -hmm. as you age. I mean, I know this, and I'm in my 50s. Mm -hmm. I, you know, find myself struggling sometimes and, you know, pulling out the flashlight on my phone if I'm at a restaurant and it's a little too dark. So um, that's another thing that I think gets kind of overlooked in homes. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing renovations, mm -hmm. look at some can lighting or some kind of um, mm -hmm. lighting that's going to be available so you have layered lighting yes. uh, for Inc safety. Including the night lights, the hallway night lights that can be activated by motion which help very often, and so that's something to also include. Um, and one last thing, so if you're doing renovations, if you're doing anything to create either a shower space downstairs, if you haven't had one previously, or you need to renovate anywhere in the house, sometimes I get the question about those walk-in bathtubs. Right. Right, and so I'll tell you, my neighbor has one, he put it in, his, his father moved in with him when he was nearly 100, and he said, it's one of the worst decisions I've ever made. Mm -hmm. um, it, I will tell you for resale, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. They'll try to tell you differently, the salespeople will, but mm -hmm. people do not want those. And the big issue with those is you're essentially trapped once you get in there mm -hmm. and you have to wait for the water to drain. So think about that. Right. You're sitting there waiting right. because it's sealed, right? And so you're going to freeze to death. You're going to freeze to death. Right. So it, and they'll, I've heard of stories. They, when they get on the phone with you, they sell you like a light package and music. Not worth it. Don't do it. You need a roll-in shower. Correct. Um, and this is good resale for Correct. any family after you. Once you sell that house later, or your family does, this will sell. Yes, excellent. That's fantastic. And for folks who have dementia, and I'll just clarify, dementia is any short-term memory cognitive changes that are impacting your daily life. And there are over 100 different causes of dementia. It could be Alzheimer's, Lewy body, frontal temporal, vascular, all different types of dementia. It's very common with dementia, whatever form it is, to have a heightened sensitivity to cold. And so you'll have loved ones or caregivers, as caregivers are struggling to get their loved ones bathed. This is a wonderful uh, layout that can be done so that the water goes central into the bathroom and also with a toilet that might be raised off the wall that if there are some accidents that happen, easy cleaning versus the pedal, pedestal. There's a great book called Treasures in the Darkness written by Pat Snyder, who's local. And Pat actually, her husband had Lewy body dementia connected with Parkinson's. And she wrote a book about her journey. And one of the chapters is about what she learned about bathroom design and what a difference it made as a caregiver that they were able to keep him home for the rest of his journey. Okay. Oh, so home, I forgot I had this mm -hmm. slide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think, did we touch on pretty much, the one thing I would say also, the kitchen I don't think we touched on, but anything that's heavy, think about like heavy pottery or a crock pot or something. So I think that one of the things that happens is, you know, we all shove stuff into the cabinets and it stays there Forever. for all time. <laughs> Right? And so to kind of rethink that while you're able or have some pullouts put yeah. in, installed in your kitchen, so that you can more easily accept, make those things accessible um, or move them into a different storage area. If you use those once a year and your kids are there at Thanksgiving or Christmas and they can help and go get that out of the garage, then do that. And then everything else that's easier that you're going to use on a daily basis because it kind of pairs down as you it get, does. right? Like as the kids are out of the house, and you're not cooking as much. Correct. So I think this is one that's very important because you're bending over, you're digging around, or you're getting on a ladder. You just, oh, yeah. No ladders. <laughs> right? So I think that's a consideration as well. And if you get to a point where you're just like, I don't want to cook anymore, like, like I'll tell you, I'll be honest. There's many a night that I'll eat a spoonful of peanut butter. I'm just saying, I'm known to do that. <laughs> However, that's not giving us all the nutrition we need. And so if you get to a point where it's just too much, I want to give you another tip, which is chef for seniors. Chef for seniors, Zach Merritt is our local chef for seniors. He's wonderful. He is wonderful. And what he can do is he, as a chef with the white coat and the hat, will come into your home and make the meals. Like there's a menu choices based on your diet or your health issues and you choose what you want, he'll get the groceries, you pay him back for the groceries, but it's very economical. I think it's like $100, $150. He'll come and cook those meals with you, and it's a beautiful engagement of conversation, scents, smells, all those wonderful experiences, and then he compartmentalizes them so they break it down into multiple meals that you can then reheat. So think about that as an option for people you may know that are not getting the nutrition or they're microwaving everything or they're eating a spoonful of peanut butter, that this is something to have 
that can be socialization, good food, quality, healthy, uh, chef for seniors. I think he does six at a time is what he's told me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So transportation, talk a little bit about that, Carla. Tell this, us. This, yeah. this is one of the toughest conversations ever. And um, um, there's someone here that actually knows my mom. And I will say that what I share is confidential. I'm not pointing to anybody. But I, you know, it's a decision we all have to face. And my mother's a very active, healthy, wonderful 86-year-old. However, things do change. Our, our um, co um, coordination our reaction time. Things happen that make it not as safe as we age in driving. And yet, that is the most independent level of, of absolute um, well, independence that we have. We all started driving, I don't know about y'all, but I was 14 practicing. Could not wait to get my license. That is a memory that is so innate. And so we have a lot of the skills they are deep in, but the coordination, the eye, um, with the different changes in our eyesight, there comes a point where it's not safe. And we have to think about that and have these tough conversations. And they're not easy ones to have. So I say that with respect and empathy because I am dealing with this myself, with my own mom, of her safety. There are options. There are home care agencies that will provide transportation. There, there of course, is um, private cost that you have to pay out of pocket for transportation. Um, and as you were just sharing, the Uber, and there's different um, taxis and faith organizations. Um, the Senior Network is one. I was, yeah, I was getting ready to suggest the Senior Network, but again, as I suggest this, and you can write it down, the Senior Network was started by three sisters who moved up here from <laughs> Florida, and their, the church that they joined, <clears throat> before they even started going to the church there, it was a sister church from Florida, they helped them unpack, they helped them get acclimated, they helped them in the community. And the sisters were like, this is what we need to look out for each other. So they started the senior network, which are volunteers who will help take folks to appointments, or pick up a prescription, or clean out the gutters, or- Companionship. Companionship, walk the dog for free. However, what the sisters have found is it's very challenging to find those volunteers. We need more people to volunteer. And I feel very strongly about this. I want to bring back the Golden Girls concept, where we work together and we live together and we share the cost and we look to help each other with these type of things. Just like when I had my kids when they were little, we used to, um, I would take care of my friend's kids and then she would take care of mine. It was like a barter. It was that type of thing. How can we do these type of things and help each other versus all of the costs that goes out. So the senior network, and I suggest if um, you do use them, find some way to give back. Volunteer, give a donation, spread the word, and get more volunteers to help. I serve on the board at the senior network. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had a, a gala that we attended. There was a, a new wellness center here in town that is uh, had made a, a nice donation so we were super excited about that That's wonderful <laughs> yes um but they are always looking for money and volunteers and they last year served over 500 requests mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and they've been in in business mm -hmm. um it's a 501c3 but they've been in service i should mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. um really just for under two years That's right. so the fact that they're able to do that in such a short period of time and not being from here is really amazing yeah, so, so it's the seniornetwork.org yes, if you org. look them up. Seniornetwork.org. Uh -huh. And then if you do need wheelchair transportation, um, my ride is a local option. Uh, Kelly Blow worked at Hillside Nursing Home, Nursing Care, and she started my ride, and I have used her many times and find her to be an outstanding resource. And it is, however, private pay. Yes, sir? Can I ask a question? Yes. Just coming driving here, as I was walking to my car, I was thinking, can I still drive safely? Mm -hmm. And all the things you're saying are when you're driving. But I was wondering. The checklist here? The checklist, yeah. That's all, all yes. when you're on the road. That's I was walking in my car. Have I, you know, right. I still have mental coordination? Yes. That I can do it safely? Is there any way of uh -huh. doing it? An, an occupational therapist can do a driving evaluation. And so yes, and we have many in the area that can do that, as well as your medical, pr your doctor can um, order a prescription for it to be evaluated. So that can be done, okay? But these are some of the things you're looking for if you're seeing uh, too fast or too slow, although my son does that, he's 22. <laughs> <laughs> my son is 22 and he drives too slow. It drives me nuts. Okay, 
Frequent close calls, getting scrapes or dents on the car, garage or mailbox, hitting curbs, having difficulty moving into, or, or maintaining the correct line of traffic. If you feel some lack of confidence, like something might be changing, that's a sign to, to address it. And if you have a family member you're, you know, having this conversation with, it's tough. My mom, oh. we just went through this last year. Mom died in October and her birthday was in September and she was due in the state of Missouri to renew her driver's license. And she was at the point where she had a friend staying with her the last couple of months. I went in for the last month and the friend called me distressed. Nancy wants to get her driver's license renewed and she should, she not, should not be doing that. And I said, okay, Joe, so you're doing all the driving now, right? And she goes, yes. And I said, so I don't even know if she can pass the eye test now. Right. So I said, you know, we're at a point at this, at this point, it's just take the path of least resistance. Yes. Let her go. If you, she can find her birth certificate, which was really the bump in the road for yes. her, let her go, see if she can pass the eye test. And then we just continue driving for yes. her. And it was so much easier than the battle mm -hmm. because she had driven 40,000 miles a year for, it, uh, for a long time exactly. for a job. So, I mean, it was a big deal mm -hmm. and I, uh, mm -hmm. we get it, you know, mm -hmm. like you want to continue driving. Yes. Yeah. So it's a hard conversation to have, but mm -hmm. if you're, if you're questioning how smart are you that you're actually having that yes. internal conversation with yourself, because a lot of people block that out. Yeah. You know, I guarantee you my mom was blocking all of this out. And when she passed and we inherited her car, dents that I hadn't noticed before, I was like, where did this come from? And I realized, mm -hmm. oh, oh, it was from her mm -hmm. driving too long. And there was a spot in the garage that was mm -hmm. damaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and none of this was spoken about. None all spoken. quiet, all going on behind the scenes. And if anyone is, as a caregiver, working with someone, a loved one who has dementia, there are some things you can do of misplacing the keys. I've had clients that we uh, unhooked the battery mm -hmm. or took a spark plug just to make the car inoperable or have it taken away and it's in the shop. Now, working with folks with dementia is a whole other presentation we can have another time, but there are some ways to navigate, but it is so important for that safety measure because if they hurt someone, that's the, just the cost and insurance and the, and the guilt and the, and the pain of all that, it's, it's a liability, so we need to really focus on my step-grandmother had dementia so we weren't the ones making the decisions but her grandchild they had mo the daughters yeah. moved her to a town close to them mm -hmm. and they moved the car on purpose and it sat in the parking lot she mm -hmm. was a handy lady she could jump a car she could change tire uh -huh. <laughs> and they disconnected it wasn't just the battery he had something else in the car that he, so he had done two things yeah. because he figured she'd figure it out <laughs> and but she would go out to the car and then she'd fix it and then she'd think oh where's my keys so it was she would forget about it and then just go back in right so they kind of just get rerouted and mm -hmm. it's not a big deal and then it's not a battle so Correct. I think that's super smart Correct. So staying active and engaged, let's talk about that because this is the way to mm -hmm. stay mm -hmm. in place, mm -hmm. live your life well. It is, and I think that, I think we can all agree that we went through a heck of a couple of years recently that we all had to deal with um, what it was like to be isolated, to be homebound. Um, and I think we're all still adjusting and, and going through that trauma that we all experienced as a country, as a world. Um, I know my children, have, are dealing with things as uh, college age, as my mom as well um, in her senior years, as myself as the adult child in between. So <clears throat> staying engaged is so vitally important. Your being here today, again, outstanding. And again, important for you to share with your friends and neighbors who are not here, to make that initiative to bring them out, to come to the senior center. This is the diamond in the rough. It's free. The classes are nominal if you do the extra classes. You're getting engagement, you're getting stimulation. Uh, for those who may have mild dementia, there are also uh, adult day centers, and there is actually one here in Wake Forest that I just opened, but there are also several in Raleigh all over the area. Uh, most of them are private pay or Medicaid, and that's another conversation about Medicaid we can talk about. But that type of socialization is so much more important than having a one-on-one, -on -one. you might have a one-on-one -on -one caregiver that is on their phone or has just the TV on. So I encourage you to find ways that your loved ones and for yourselves to continue having some type of stimulation, be conversation, uh, book clubs, exercising, the senior center, volunteering, 
uh, becoming, I love that you, I love that you, I didn't see this, love that you have become a foster grandparent. That is outstanding. Add to this, share with why you chose that one to the list. That's fantastic. Well, uh, actually, the Senior Network is, is, has a program mm -hmm. um, that they're trying to get up and running within the organization. But um, I was just standing here as you're talking, thinking about my Uncle Jim, who lived to be 90, had um, ended up having a, a leg amputated. And he lived in Orlando. He was right in the center of town. He wasn't far from his, his kids and grandkids. And I would stop and see him when I lived down there. And he would, I would say, well, you know, when, when was the last time you saw the kids? And it'd be a long time. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, well, they invite me to dinner, but I don't want to be a burden. Right. You know, it's the wheelchair and all the whole thing. And I said, Uncle Jim, you need to understand this. I, all of my grandparents were gone by the time I was 15, mm -hmm. all of them. And some of them I barely, barely knew, and most actually. Um, and so to me, what a gift that he was not only a grandfather to grown grandchildren, but also great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, you are denying them. Yes. And, and I mean this sincerely, you are denying them of the privilege of, of the, the, all of the stories that go with our family. Mm -hmm. So you need to get in the car and go with them. It is not a burden. Mm -mm. They are inviting you because they sincerely want you to go. You've been the fun guy in our family all these years. Yep. You don't stop doing that just because you've got a fake leg. Exactly. You know? So I think that's part of it is, I think sometimes you think there are some seniors who sit home and think, I don't have, you know, like I've retired, I've raised my kids, I don't have anything really to contribute. And it's exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I, I literally during COVID went through, I, I drove to Missouri, mom's sick, I'm, I want to see her, but I'm not going to, you know, I mm -hmm. literally barely stopped at gas stations because I was afraid I didn't want to take anything to her. Mm -hmm. But once I got there, then I couldn't see anybody else. Mm -hmm. It was just mom. And I'm, I'm going through family pictures and I literally am taking pictures of pictures on my phone and sending to my aunt who lives 30 miles away at this point. I'm yes. driven 15 hours, but she's 30 miles away. Yes. And she's the only one. She's a historian at this point. And I'm like, who is this? Yes. And I'm making notes because all these pictures, nobody's made notes at all these years, right? Yes. So, so whether it's fostering or your own family, this is the time that you can actually fill all those blanks in that your kids will have the questions when you're gone and your grandkids. Because right. how many of us have lost somebody and you go, oh, why didn't I ask before they, why didn't I ask this question? Did right. anybody ever done that? Yeah, right? Yeah. So fill those answers in. Yep. For your family, it's a gift, yeah. and spend that time with them. So a couple other thoughts, because you have this wonderful facility right here, the Senior Center. Um, there's also meetup groups, meetup, M-E-E-T, up, and you can look up. <laughs> I love that you spell it. Well, not M-E-E-T, <laughs> meet. I want to meet you. No, no, I know, because it's just not known to people, so, right? <laughs> yes. So meet up, that you can find things of interest that might be something that you're interested in, hiking, um, art museums, philosophy, chess, you name it. And that's a way to, to find folks locally that might have an interest that's similar, or maybe it's something you want to expand on. Again, it's free. It's a way to get together with other like-minded folks. You do want to be cautious, however, of any types of scams, and be cautious if, if, of who you share your contact information with. I think it's great if you find something in common and you go and meet in a public place, that's fine. But just to also be very cautious of the scams because Lord knows every day there's something new and you'll get some type of Facebook friend request and you're like, I'm already friends with them. Why am I getting this friend request again? That happens all the time. So that's our subject next month, avoiding oh, scams. Oh, good. Avoiding scams. Mm -hmm. Avoiding scams. So that come back next month for that topic yeah. for sure. So assistance, um, and so with assistance, in December, we're gonna have a whole seminar on home health and home personal care, but I gotcha. do want you to touch on this because okay. I know you have a lot to give. Yes, okay, so in resources for seniors, which is an, uh, that you can contact and get the resource guide, and I think they have them here as well, there are so many agencies out there that are, this is all private pay. So just to clarify, if you're in the hospital, or have to go to a physical rehab and come home, you have home health. Home health is covered by insurance, and that would be physical therapy, uh, nursing, if there's a wound care, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and a nurse checking in. That's only for a period of time. And then that ends. And what if you still need help with yourself or a loved one? That's when you hire um, a home care agency. 
A couple of my favorites, and again, I share this based on my experience. I receive nothing, no kickbacks. I really, really respect Seniors Helping Seniors. Seniors Helping Seniors is a national um, franchise. There are franchises all over where folks that are whatever age, 50 and up, are companions for their peer group. I love that because when I have a client and they need someone to come into the home, a lot of the agencies, we do, we have to, we have to, we have 18 year olds, 19 year olds, and they're, they're helping with what you need in the bathroom or getting dressed, but there's a lot of times challenges of communication of what to have stimulating, so well, I, that's because that's all I tend to do. see them on their phones, <laughs> you know, when I, when I do like surprise visits, I'm like, so, but think about the, a companion that's more of your peer group. So you have a 70 year old man who is an, a home companion for two hours with another gentleman who's 80 who has some dementia and they go and talk about golf or they go, you know, hit a couple golf balls. Um, or they go to the Home Depot and walk around. I don't know what y'all do. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it's more of that um, companion. So seniors helping seniors. They're, the rates are going up. When I first started back in 2010 in Philadelphia, where I lived at the time, the average hourly rate was about 18 an hour for an aide. It's now from 34 to $42 an hour. And that's all private pay. And many of those agencies, in fact, most of them, 99% of them, practically, require a four-hour minimum. And I understand why, because if you're going to hire someone to come out, they need consistent hours. If they're just going to go for an hour, that person's only making $18. Actually, they're, they may or may not be making $18. You're, they're getting, okay. You're getting billed. You're getting billed. The agency gets a piece of that. Because, because the reason is, this is why. Because if they're paying their employee, let's say 18, you got to double it. That's 36. Because as a company, you've got to handle the training, the, the, the testing, the um, background checks, uh, all of those things. As a business owner, I can tell you, they add up. And I don't have aides that work for me. I have no aides. But I get it. Um, but that's why they have the four-hour minimum. There is another company called Cornerstone. And Cornerstone, I um, am now starting to refer more to because they are doing one-hour shifts. And they're charging $36 an hour. It's high, yes, but what if you just need an hour in the morning to help that person get up and get dressed and get ready? So I like that flexibility, and I want to see more agencies be able to do that, but it's very challenging. But you know what's a good way to make it work? Is if in your neighborhood, you know your neighbors, and you know that there's folks who have a need, share it. Work together and get the same agency involved and say, we've got three neighbors, and we want to hire the same person, the aide, to work six hours with us. Two hours at Bob's, an hour at Susie's, and three hours with John. And that's a way, again, the Golden Girls method, coming together as neighbors, cross-sharing the cost of care. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm really trying to encourage that message because that's the way to stretch the dollar and stretch the resources by talking to your neighbors and finding out what needs are out there and combining the cost. So one of the benefits, if, if and when you or anyone you know uh, makes the decision to move into independent living, yes. a lot of these agencies either have their own office within that community or they come in and they'll do the same thing and they'll even split it. Some of them will 15 split minutes. down to yeah, 15 minutes 15 or 30 minutes. minutes. So essentially, <laughs> while it seems like that price tag is higher, you get everything included, right. um, but you also get some savings where you have just enough help and they're coming to a hundred doors in that community in one stop instead of your one door mm -hmm. in your neighborhood in if your there's home. no one else exactly. you can split it with. So that's a consideration if you get to the point mm -hmm. where that's one of the, the items that's on your checklist and you're considering moving into um, either mm -hmm. independent living or you know, yeah. leaning into the assisted living space. Are you covering that topic specifically for what those are? So we're going to talk about, um, I do, so which month is it? We have um, senior independent living options is in September. That's okay. all, the postcard that has our whole, the rest of the year, okay. all of the dates for our seminars. So they're once a month. Um, on the second Thursday of the month at the same time, 10.30 in the morning. Okay. And then how to pay for senior and assisted okay. living is the next month, and that's in October. So okay. that month we'll actually have um, five panelists. So we're going to cover Medicare, VA, 
um, all the all the different things. A long term, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, um, a can wealth I, specialist. Can I, can I touch so. on that real quick? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you my speed version of my opinion. Stay home, absolutely, as long as you can. Absolutely, but at some point it may cost more to stay home if you're bringing in 24-hour care. If you do the math, $40 times 24, I can't do the math, that's too much. Um, so, so it comes to a point where you have to weigh it out and it might be that you need to move. So this is my speed realm. Home first, independent living as your, as your next option. Independent living would be like the lodge, the gardens, there's a whole list of them, atria, they're all around. Independent living, and they're going to go over this in a bit, mm -hmm. um, could be anywhere from like four to six thousand dollars. Let's say I'm just throwing out numbers, but everything's included. It's kind of like a little cruise ship on land. Your meals are included, the cleaning's <laughs> included, your transportation's included, socialization's included. Everything's included. You got you have no yard to deal with, no gutters to clean, nothing nothing to break that you have to worry about. Twenty four hour maintenance man. All included. Yep. So that's a great thing. And you can age in place and spend the rest of your life in independent living as long as you don't become a two-person assist. And that means it takes two people to help you to the bathroom. You can be in independent living and need someone to come help you go to the bathroom. Okay? But you're on their time, not 24-7. So if it's 3 a.m., there's not going to be a caregiver. There's very few that have 24 hours. It's usually during the day that you can have Susie come every two hours to help you to the bathroom. But I have folks that can spend the rest of their lives in independent and even through full hospice, which I'm a big fan. Folks, don't be afraid of hospice. It's one of the best things that's out there as support, They're rallying fantastic. the troops. That's another conversation. Yeah. Um, but you can then bring in a caregiver if you need someone overnight. That's still less expensive as an option. Assisted living would be probably between um, most average between seven and eight thousand dollars eighty five hundred a month private pay all this is private pay out of pocket but that's where you have 24 7 an aid that would be able to help it's a much smaller space um, but everything's included in that I'm not a big fan of CCRC's continued care retirement communities <laughs> I'm not I'll be honest because a lot of those communities are so expensive to get in. You have to put down like three or four hundred thousand dollars just to get in. Five hundred. Yeah. Uh. And then you're like, this is great. If you have that kind of money, go for it. It's great when you're independent living. But what I have found through my years of working with over six hundred people, families, that it never fails. They love it when they first go in, but then when one of them has to go to assisted living on the campus, it's not good. It's not good. And you're still paying assisted living and independent, and you put all that money in. So I just caution you to think about those options. Independent, most cost effective. Only if you need to have two people help you, would you need to, or if you had um, um, dilation, uh, what is it? Um, oh, well. Dialysis? Dialysis. Um, tracheotomy, oh, okay. those type of things that you couldn't be in an independent living. But There's actually a couple of independent livings in the area that are leaning more into the assisted living space. Mm -hmm. So you can buy a la carte yes. or you can buy medical packages yes. that make it a little more affordable to stay in your, and they live, their goal is for you to stay in independent. Of course, then they continue to have your paycheck Correct. come in every month. But it also allows right. you that flexibility to lean into just what you need. Just what you need, exactly. And I, my guess is that we'll see more and more of so. these communities doing this because because it's projected, experts are projecting that by the year 2030, there will be a shortage in senior housing. Yes. And we currently have in the United States 55 million people who are 65 or over. And that number will grow to 90 million in the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to mean a major shortage of those kinds of places. So one of the things we'll address is mm -hmm. putting one of those places on your list of, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you make a deposit and you let them pass you over for a while. So we'll talk about that at one of these yep. um, future meetings. And just to also clarify, make sure Medicaid does not pay for this. Yeah. Medicaid. So Medicare is health insurance for hospital doctor rehab. Medicaid is if you are unable, like for skilled nursing. In North Carolina, it's for skilled nursing care, not independent, not assisted living. It's nursing home skilled level. So I have folks who are running out of money and yet they're not sick enough to go into skilled care. And you also have to spend down your money to $2,000. And there's a five year look back. Cause I've had folks who are like, well, I'll just give it to my children and they'll hold it. No, they look at your bank statements for five years going backwards to make sure you haven't 
done those type of things. So that's another Offloaded topic. your assets. So, Offloaded yeah. your assets. So just, mm -hmm. just know that all we're talking about is private pay. You need to think, if you're thinking towards um, protecting your assets for your family, talk to an elder law attorney. And I'm happy to give you some suggestions. There's several that will do free consultations. And you plan ahead to protect your assets so that you would be eligible that's a whole other topic. We'll, we'll have a seminar on that yeah. too. Yeah. Sorry I had so, to throw that in. No, there's so much. There's just so much to cover and learn. And it, you know, once you kind of start diving down the rabbit hole, it's a lot, isn't mm -hmm. it? And yeah. long-term care policies. Does anybody have a long-term care insurance policy? Okay, know your policy. Look at it, understand it, and make sure you're aware what the elimination days are. Most of them are 90, which means it's like a, you have to pay out of pocket 90 days for care before the long-term care policy will start reimbursing. And so many times folks don't, and then they get sicker and sicker or pass away before they're even able to access their long-term care plan. Also take a look at your plan if it covers um, a professional care manager to give you an assessment. Some of the older policies have that, and that means my, my uh, care plan and service could be reimbursed. Okay. Oh, one more thing. I'm so sorry. No. So then, okay, if you don't have a long-term care policy, you could have a life insurance policy with a rider. That's what I did. I'm 57, and I, I just, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to afford a long-term care policy. So I got a 15-year term life insurance policy with a rider, which means if I need to use that policy for medical expenses, I can which means if I use it and then I die, I don't have that much money to leave to my children. I'm using it while I'm alive for medical. So that's something to think about uh, if, you, if you look at a life insurance policy with a rider. I just talked to my financial planner about that because mm -hmm. I asked some questions mm -hmm. about long-term. Mm -hmm. I had looked, didn't really ever have it on my radar mm -hmm. until I started learning all of this. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at long-term care, my gosh, it's like a car payment. It, it, it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, the policies are not what they used to right. be. Right. So then I heard that there were annuities that they yes. can be attached to, but I really like the idea. That's yeah. what she was, yeah, she was proponent So mine's 15 years, of. which means, I don't know what 15 plus 57 is, whatever age that is, uh -huh. um, 83? Uh, uh, 70, 72. 72. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Mm -hmm. Really? Is that right? Yeah, 72. Yeah. Wait, wait, that's it? I thought it was yeah, older. Okay, 72. Well, anyway, math. <laughs> but the point being that I have some big decisions to make at that point because I hope I live another 20 or 30 years. Right. So it's, it's for now that's something that I'm able and to do. And here's another statistic to share with you. So statistically, if you do not have any major health issues like heart or cancer, um, if you hit the age of 80, you're very likely to make it to the age of 100. So you need to plan for that now. <laughs> For good, bad, or indifferent, right? <laughs> Sorry to be the bearer of bad news yeah. or good news. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Again, but plan accordingly. We're going to go back to the, we're going to make it a Golden Girls commune and we're going to all live together <laughs> and help each other. Right, yeah, because when you, I mean, literally, does the regist cash register start going as soon as you hear that? It does for me. Uh -huh. Like, I start immediately, yeah. Actually, I'm like sweating now. It's like, okay. sorry about that, it's okay. yeah. Okay, so signs it's time for a move. Yep. Um, so poor health that's just getting worse, changes in hygiene, isolation, safety concerns, increasing difficulty managing daily tasks, trouble keeping up with bills, inability to properly care for the home. Yep. So what things can you, anything you want to expand upon? That's it. Those are kind of the big things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if any of these things are happening with you or a family member, it's time to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and explore your options. Oh, I do want to, there was something that you had um, you that was about, back? it's okay, you don't have to go backwards, but um, what resources are out there to help you with some of these conversations? And this is not, I promise you, on my children, on not a sales pitch, I promise. But I do free consultations, 30 minute consultations, and as a professional care manager, it's, it's a good person to talk to about some of these topics and those tough questions. Um, also with your doctor, and on average, your primary care physician spends about 12 minutes on average with you. So that's hard to have that conversation that you need to get into depth. Um, so I encourage you to have um, the points that you want to address with your doctor. And you can't add other things because they can't bill. They can't bill for it. So you can ask your doctor if I can sp speak specifically about um, changes in my, in my health status of what I should be planning toward. A care manager like myself, and I'm part of the Aging Life Care Association, 
www.thepeopleshow.org. And you can find someone like me anywhere in the country. So it does not have to be me. You can look and put in the zip code. But talk to uh, professionals. And I prefer that you talk to folks, I mean, I do, about like myself, because we don't accept referral fees. They're wonderful services that are free, which I told you all about before I was being videotaped. Yes. I'm not going to say it again, but <laughs> it rhymes with a place for. Um, anyway. Um, They'll give you great advice and recommendations, but know that they're narrowed to places that give them a referral feedback. Mm -hmm. So, and once you get in, if you get into that place I was telling you about, if you get in their system as a search, oh. you can't get out. You can't get out, which means if you hired me to help you with the placement, I can't negotiate. I can't negotiate because you're in the system because you're under that referral. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So careful when you see something free for setting up tours because whatever's setting up that tour will be giving you, they'll be given a, a, um, a kickback. I love some of the placement organizations. I work with them all the time. I love Always Best Care, Care Patrol, fantastic. But know that they're getting paid by the community that you select. And their menu of selections is narrowed because of the structure, the pay structure. Correct. Does that mean, okay. So again, free consultation if I can answer any questions. Right now on the spot, though, are there questions that y'all might have that you want to raise? Um, yes, Ray. Is there a waiting list to get in assisted living? Do we have to plan ahead say, okay? Assisted living? Assisted? No, independent. independent living. Um, usually not. Um, there, there can be a waiting list with some of the communities, yeah. but most of them are pretty quick because folks go in and then something could happen that there are changes in their life, a fall, a hospitalization needing more care. So there tends to be turnover in assisted living that you can get into fairly quickly. But independent living, is that the question you're asking? Oh, independent. So yes, and specifically for if you want, the larger the unit you want as a rule of thumb, mm -hmm. the harder those are to come by. Right. So if, you, if you're okay in a studio, they'll usually have those available. And one of the things you can do is move into the studio and then bounce to one of the larger units when it becomes available. Right. But by then you've already downsized to basically a recliner and a bed. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what you could fit in those, True. Right? right? But that to answer that question, yes, that's now there are some newer ones that there is availability. Yep. Um, I and just toured coming. one. Yes, actually, I've done two tours this week, but mm -hmm. um, there's availability at both the ones I just mm -hmm. toured. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. On the same note, the independent living. Um, I heard you recommend the lodge. Well, no, it's local. That's the local. The lodge and the gardens of Wakefield are the closest right here, mm -hmm. and then just down Falls of Noose, it's um, Verena. Verena. And then there's the Atria, Oak Ridge, uh -huh. and there's Trio is not, Trio's not too far. Um, so those are the closest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily a recommendation as it is closest options. Right, and Trio is probably the least inexpensive. Um, Trio is off Spring Forest, and they have studios starting at like 2700 a month. Remember, that's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. So that's transportation, internet, mm -hmm. you know, food, all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then be prepared that when you do... If you're looking towards a move to a community, be it independent or assisted living, you will pay a community fee, which is usually equal to one month's rent. And Unless they're running incentives, yeah. And they do run specials and incentives because those are sales folks. they got to fill the beds. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times towards the end of the month, you'll see them kind of start negotiating more to get the bed filled for their mm -hmm. numbers. Just like sales. That's what it is. But that's where I negotiate because I don't take a referral fee. So if it's a, a month community fee, I'll say, come on, can we, can we cut you know, a couple thousand off of that, help the family out? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I can do that. I've done that too with clients who mm -hmm. I'm selling their house and so I'll go tour with them. I have a lady, the lady I toured with yesterday doesn't have any family nearby. Mm -hmm. And she recently suffered the loss of her 30 year partner. And so oh. um, she's, she just really couldn't even like, you know, she wasn't really speaking much the mm -hmm. first tour we took. And then she was a little better yesterday, but um, she, she gets in the car and she said, thank you for asking all those questions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but one of the things about touring a lot of them is you learn kind of the ins and outs mm -hmm. and you learn what to ask for. And that's good. Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's helpful. Other questions? Yes, sir. I've been listening and there's a lot to keep up with. Yes, sir. <laughs> and my question is, when you reach the point where you need to access these, I thought that was all, when you need to access the services, does the senior here, would that be a repository where you can come 
and get referrals and get names and get access. The senior center? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that could be this place to start. Jenny Griggs and her team are absolutely, they have their finger on the pulse and they can absolutely, and it's all objective from their workings as well as the resources for seniors. Those are two good places to start. So this could be a point of access. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're welcome, sir. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, is it ever too early to start, exp you know, exploring? No. Independent. I mean, I pray that I can stay in this house. If yeah. Downsize, mm -hmm. Yes. So it's convenient to yes. explore everything. Yes. But I'm just wondering. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. You don't know. So I think it's good to go and explore, but know that what you see now Correct. will not necessarily be the same two years from now. I also want to say that if you look at ratings, the Medicare ratings, when you look at .gov and you'll see um, the different communities and different ratings, don't trust those necessarily. Some of the lowest rating assisted living and skilled care communities I've seen, like have one or two star, I highly recommend. Because if you think about it, like folks who might have a really negative experience are the first ones who are going to put it out there. That doesn't mean right now that's what it's like. So don't go by the ratings. I, have, I, was, I apologize, I don't no. want to jump in. Also, I want to share this as well. When you're in the hospital and they want you to go to physical rehab, the discharge planner is gonna give you the list, and it's like four pages, and they'll cross out the ones your insurance won't take, and they go, which one do you wanna to go to? And you're like, I don't know, I have no idea. That's where someone like myself as a care manager, or that you might know of, knowing the communities which you would recommend. So think about that those communities that you might need to go to for physical therapy um, or utilize a care manager. Um, but independent, go ahead and start looking now, but just know that it could be different because management changes and a lot of things change when you have a director, how their culture is for their, mm -hmm. how they do That's things. true. Yeah. It? I had a, a client that we steered away from a community because of the culture there mm -hmm. and it's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the, the staff does a good job of covering up, but they're unhappy. Yep. Um, so one of the suggestions I always make is if you're considering going to at some point, uh, living in independent living or what have you go up, call them up, have them send their transportation cause they all offer free transportation. So have them send their van to pick you up and bring you for the tour and make them feed you, make them feed you lunch while you do the tour because the food is really important. There's one CCRC when I toured it, I heard that there had been a cornbread uprising <laughs> and they, they finally narrowed it to four recipes and then everyone voted on the, the cornbread. Yeah. So the food is a big deal because they provide it yep. as part of that package. Yep. So you wanna make sure that you're liking what yep. you're getting. Um, I, that, wasn't that a sly move I just made right there? Um, mm -hmm. I was just checking because we do lunch at the adult day that I, that I have, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm the one who usually places the order, and it, it's good. We're good. We're okay. good. Oh, taken. good. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm, I'm noticing this lady here, probably, and um, she's been asking for this lady for a while, and um, I think I see a need that maybe you, you two could address yeah. down the road. I mean, you don't know which... If you're married, which one's going to go first? Right. We know statistically how that goes. Yes. Right. So I think you could have something just for wives mm -hmm. and maybe have one in that series, bring your husband to this one mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, just being realistic. I agree. I mean, my mom, my dad died at 71. My mom's 86. And he handled most everything, and so it was a, a relearning experience for her, all well, new learning, from the age of 70 on. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent suggestion, and I think I'm going to jump on that suggestion and make it happen. This so, so if you would, please fill out the survey that's at your, and I'm not finished with questions if you have any more, but I just want to jump off of that. So if you do have a suggestion for, for uh, subjects that you'd like to hear covered in the future, one of the things that we've done with the, the postcard that you have at each one of you at your place, that has the rest of this year's schedule. And part of that, um, whenever I started scheduling these, I have to match the tracks or subjects of each month for the center. So that's part of the reason for the choices of subjects that are in place now. So if I have the suggestions now,